let, let's say I'm an I'm a, a, a chronic athlete. I, I just I just love sports. I just keep practicing, keep going out there. That describes and, you well. <laughs> <laughs> and let's say that I decide that I am not a surgical candidate. I choose not to use medications that may potentially cause more side effects than they're worth. Mm -hmm. And I want to utilize your treatment and therapy. Can I continue to have ongoing prolotherapy, PRP, and I also want to lead up to, you mentioned, and I wasn't sure I wanted to ask you that question, you mentioned you'd do a one four-hour procedure. Can't you do it more than once if, if need be? Come back to either the same joint or is there an issue or a concern for that? All right, well, first of all, yes, we want to keep people out going. And the big thing, by the way, about all my techniques, there's really no downtime. I mean, we may have a couple of days. We want you to take it easy. Then we slowly bring you back. We want you to heal in what we call a dynamic position and not in a static position. Unlike surgery, you have surgery done, and you're in a crutch. You're on crutches, or you're in some sort of immobilizer for three, six weeks. And then you need weeks and weeks of physical therapy. But with my treatments, the dextrose is every three weeks, the PRP is every six weeks. What you alluded to is a stem cell. Now that's again, bone on bone, no more cartilage, or you need your joint replaced. One of those or all of those have been told to someone, they're already, quote, a candidate for what I do. I have to examine them, make sure that they are a candidate for my procedure. But if I do that procedure, the procedure is only done once, and usually takes about four months for the cells to start to grow, and within six to eight months, that joint will start to grow, proliferate, and usually that procedure is only done once. Now with the other ones, they are done multiple times, but once they're done, they're healed for good. 13 years ago, I was told by three neurosurgeons that if I did not have my back operator on, I would not do any more surgery. I had pain down my legs, not be able to perform surgery. No, no, I'm well, sorry. I'm sorry, not surgery. Uh, sports. sports. I would not be able to do sports say, okay. anymore. Yeah. I had pain down my legs uh, for about six months running. Yeah. I tried chiropractic, acupuncture, massage, nothing worked. And I did see three neurosurgeons independently all said, no surgery, then just live a very quiet lifestyle, no more sports, which was a death sentence to me. Yeah, for you. And I found out about me. this and I got treated. And as I said, uh, I just completed my fourth Ironman triathlon and hopefully we'll go on and do more and more. And I also had my shoulder four years ago. That was 13 years ago. And four years ago, uh, I tore my shoulder and I was told I did have an MRI because nothing was working and the exams were not matching up. So that confirmed it. And I was told right off the bat by the radio, I'll just go find a surgeon, nothing else will get you better. And as you can see, this shoulder is actually better than my other shoulder. So there, if there's a will, there's a way. Search out, I tell people, look for alternatives. People are searching more and more, but the trouble is, is that people still, I'm gonna see my surgeon, see my surgeon, see what he has to say. Well, a surgeon, you know, again, if you call the plumber in, he's not talking about your electrical wiring, he's talking about your plumbing. So if you call a surgeon in, it's gonna come from a surgical background and a surgical opinion. And they're great salesmen they close that deal. If you don't do this, this joint's gonna get worse and you're crippled. I, I've had them tell me these things. I've had many patients who've had surgery. <laughs> I had a patient who went for a second opinion and the first opinion doctor said, oh, that guy, that doctor may do surgery. And he said, no, I'm just going for an opinion. She got talked into having surgery. And the reason I know about that is she ended up back in my office because she was in worse pain uh, than before she had the surgery and then fortunately we were able to save her knee wow. without any more surgeries. Even if they've had one or two, but I, I tell people even one surgery is one surgery too much. Dr. Peter Fields, you, you've seen a lot. Who do you think were good mentors for you? How did you accumulate this incredible experience and background and knowledge? It's, it's just well, I must admit, I mean, I did have a very extensive background as you stated, I'm both mm -hmm. Uh, a medical physician and a chiropractor. So I was a practicing chiropractor for about seven years before going back to medical school. Um, so that gave me a tremendous background in musculoskeletal medicine tremendous. as a chiropractor. And then I did do some ER work uh, prior to going into private practice. So I was very adept with injections and needles and things like that. I did uh, attend a lecture by a very, very dear friend of mine, unfortunately, who did pass away uh, um, recently, Dr. Jeffrey Patterson, Professor Emeritus at the University of Wisconsin, who was basically the head 
of the Hackett Hemwall Foundation. And with him and his organization, I was able to get trained. Obviously, uh, my skills helped me improve. And now, when I go with that organization, uh, we have three clinics in Honduras. And I am actually the director of one of those clinics. So I'm teaching many, many doctors this art of doing this. But it takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of practice. But uh, it's not for everybody but it's something that I fell into and uh, I seem to be very good at.